Hello. Uh, today we are going to be demoing how to use the bandsaw. The bandsaw is a saw that has a blade that goes, there's a wheel up here and there's a wheel down here. And the saw, the saw blade is just a long band of saw blade that just goes like this in this motion. Um, like a giant kind of oval between these two wheels that are under tension. The blade is right here. Um, and the blade just cuts, it's always cutting down. Um, so I'm gonna give you uh, kind of a, tut a short tutorial on how to use this safely. Um, and uh, yeah, okay, I'm gonna pause it as we stay in the next shot. Okay, so today what we're gonna do is I'm gonna teach you how to use the bandsaw. Uh, we've drawn this duck tail, thanks for drawing the duck. Um, so I'm gonna cut this out of a piece of Baltic birch plywood. And you can see in this one shot here, the grain pattern of the plywood. Basically it's plywood, thin plies that have been basically flipped one way and then the next way and then the next way and then the next way. So Baltic birch is actually a very stable plywood. It's great um, for cutting um, and uh, I love using it, but you can use any kind of wood. We're gonna do a test too with some cedar that we have um, and show you some scrap wood too. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna show you is I'm just gonna show you first thing, just how to cut a straight line through. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut kind of like that shape out. And then what I'll end up doing was, will be, then I'll start cutting this kind of more longer duck thing out. One thing to note is that on the duck, you'll notice that Chella drew the duck directly to the borders up to the edge of the piece of plywood. Whenever you're using a piece of plywood, much like a piece of paper, you want to like, you want to use, you want to waste as little as possible. So if she had drawn the duck, say smaller, we would have had a lot of waste. And so one of the things whenever you're thinking about a project is you want to use as little waste as possible. You want to start on one end, start, and then that's why you use pencil and you just kind of keep doing it. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, uh, I'm going to pause for just a second. Okay, so a few things to think about. So the bandsaw blade is right here. You never want to have your hand in a position where if you did the wood slip that you would cut your fingers. So you always want to have your fingers off to the side. On this side, say, or over on this side, um, if you're making a large cut, you can have your fingers this way. Um, one thing you'll see is that if I, if I get into the habit and I'm going to just move my thumbs here so you can see them more properly. One thing is that you don't want to, let me find a little scrap piece of wood to demonstrate this. Say you're cutting a small piece of wood like this. You don't want to get into the habit of having your thumbs out to the side. You really want to get your, the habit of having your thumbs tucked in so you don't errantly get behind the blade and cut into it, okay? So one thing you really just want to get into the habit of having your fingers together and you want to use both your hands. The other thing that you want to do, and in Cello's camera you can see, is that I want to roll my sleeves up. You don't want any cloth to get caught in the blade. If you're wearing sweatshirts, you want to make sure you don't have any um, uh, ties coming down or necklaces or long ponytails or braids or something like that. Okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna do just a quick couple cuts in this. Uh, so check your volume and we're gonna test this volume. And hopefully it's not too loud. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and just let the volume be and we'll see what happens. So I press the green start button over here. So there's a few things I didn't show and that we had prepped before uh, the video. So I'm just gonna go over that real quick right now. So Chella, would you just kind of point this? So if you notice the wood I'm cutting, it's just about a quarter inch of space up here. You always wanna leave this to be about a quarter inch. Sometimes you're gonna be cutting thinner wood, sometimes thicker wood. So Chella, will you pull back a second just so people can see this? 
So if you can see my hand, and you can see this, there's a little sign that says loosen this to adjust. You loosen that just about a half a turn. That's all it needs. It, it, it holds under its own weight, under tension, and you can raise the blade. So you can cut a very thick piece of wood. But if any one of you is planning to cut something thicker than about an inch and a half, please come and get me. And I just want to make sure you're, you have it set up because there are some there are some real safety protocols you have to take um, if you're getting thicker that this video is not covering. This is really only covering the three quarters or say inch and thinner wood. Okay. So you bring it down. What I like to do is I like to sit it on the wood and then just very gently lift it up. So it's about a quarter inch. When I come back here, you have to make sure you remember to lock it. Just hand tighten it. Okay. And again, it's just a half a turn to loosen and a half a turn to retighten it. Um, so I have that right there. Um, and then the other thing is that, um, so let's just keep going. So what I'm going to do is I'm right now, my next move is I'm going to come through here. I'm going to cut along that line. And then I'm going to reverse it. And then I'm going to flip it. I'm going to cut in. And then I'm going to reverse it. So one final detail that I wanted to show you that I did on this previous cut that Cho, can you see that real close right there? Is, is that in that line right there, you can see that I left a little bit of wood, I cut on the outside of the line. It's important to understand which side of a line you want to cut on. And, um, and you, can, you can then take it to our, our bench center to kind of finesse it. Uh, the, the, the bandsaw, this bandsaw is a large, thick blade for cutting big stuff. It's not the best for making tight curves. Um, so, uh, okay. So let's continue. Hopefully the sound is not too crazy. So three, two, one, I'm gonna turn on the sound for you at home. So one thing that you may have noticed is that I had to kind of reverse a few times because the blade was getting a little bit off center. And so that's just a touch, uh, a thing about touch and using a band touch to expect is that it will kind of veer a little bit and you do have to kind of be very gentle. You don't want to jam it. You can't force the blade or else the blade will crack um, and it'll snap and it'll be a real scary experience for you. Likely you will not get too hurt from it because of all the safeties in place but it will scare you a lot. And so I encourage you to not force it, just to reverse and try to recorrect. You can always sand back that little bit. Okay, so I'm gonna start again. <laughs> Okay, so some of you may notice on the on the on the computer in the screen on the upper left, you'll notice I use my foot to stop the blade. Um, if this is a break, uh, maybe tell me this on your handheld, you can kind of show this foot right here. There is a foot pedal right here, and you can you can press on that after you're done with your cut and after the power's off. And there's a little break inside, and it'll slow down the blade so you can kind of prep your next cut. Um, okay, so let's just pause it for a second. Okay, so um, before we get started, I just want to point out how you turn the power on. So when you turn on the power, you're going to press the green start button. And when you want to cut the power, you press the red stop button. Um, the red is a little bit raised uh, to make it easier in case of emergency. Okay. Um, the other thing I want to point out is that uh, this is a bandsaw past the test. Only Michael can add names. As of this moment, there's nobody on this list, but very soon there will be a lot of you on this list. So watching this demo does not check you out. 
you have to, I have to watch you and check you out. Um, this is kind of step one to using it. Um, and I know some of you in, uh, are coming in with previous experience and I can watch you do it. Um, when we get to send it. The other thing that's important is that um, when you're using a band or a demo, we're not using the dust collector because it is very loud. Again, you press the green start button and you press the red start button to stop. So dust collector is using police. Every time you're in this room, you're using police to use the dust Um And the last thing is that sometimes this right here is closed down um, when this is not in use. So you can always check that this is open. Don't pull it out all the way. Can you get back in? Um, but uh, but this, is, this is what makes the dust suck. Okay, so thank you. Okay. Okay, folks, so what we're gonna do for the purpose of the demo is we're gonna, I'm gonna demonstrate first how to cut this kind of front above the beak and forehead. And then I'm gonna cut into the neck, which are basically two very different yet standard ways to use the band saw. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started. So a few things that you can see that I was doing if you were following along is that as I was kind of making these cuts, right? As I was making these cuts, I was trying to basically, I was just allowing things to be straight and a little bit outside of the line. To get the back of the neck, I went wide down to the, where the back is. And then this is basically how I would continue to remove this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm now gonna remove underneath the neck and, uh, and you'll see how I'm kind of doing that step by step without forcing the blade at any point.
I've just rearranged the camera so you can see a little bit closer. What I'm going to be doing to match this, to match this line right here, I'm going to be doing what's called curve cutting. And I'm just going to be making, a, and I've kind of done that, but I haven't called it what it is. I'm basically going to be making a series of little parallel cuts all the way to this line. And then I'm going to come back and slice them all out. Okay, so here we go. So as soon as I noticed this piece of wood stuck here, um, I stopped the blade and it's passed through. If a, if a piece of wood ever gets stuck, you want to try to get it out um, before you keep going. Okay. Um, but you can see, and I think we'll kind of finish this demo right here, is that essentially what I've done is I made these series of little curve cuts and then I matched the line. And then I'm going to be able to sand this back um, using a sander. Um, just very close in, I can get more, and maybe I'll just go ahead and do that, um, and we'll let this finish out. And um, I'll just try to get as close as I can. Um, oh, I guess this is actually one thing that's important. So this is a big blade. So the thickness of this blade is pretty wide. I believe it's a half inch blade. We have another band saw over here. Um, that right now still has a big blade, um, but it's, uh, it's, this one's on a blade that you can keep all to use. And as soon as we get this one changed out, we're going to put it on to a smaller blade. So this bandsaw will be better for detail work. So that's one thing. Another tool we have for detail work is real detail work is what's called a scroll saw. So you can see this blade is super thin right here. And this is fantastic for center stuff. I will say that three quarter inch ball of perfect, for example, is a little bit uh, pushing as it goes. The three quarter inch uh, bulk at first really pushes uh, the boundaries of the, of the scroll top. So, um, so, this is great for really thin stuff, uh, little on and things like that. Um, we have a coping saw too, which is a hand saw, which is also basically a version that's going to be that can be good if you can't reach stuff, um, a rasp, and just good old fashioned sandpaper for things like this tight hand right here. Okay, thank you for watching.